Behold, Galvatron. Horror Nation, Starscream. This is bad comedy. Here's a hint. I will rip open Ultra Magnus and every other Autobot until the Matrix has been destroyed. Unicron, my master. With this, I shall make you my slave. What's going on YouTube? Jepper Productions coming back at you with another Transformers video review and in today's video I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Kingdom Leader Class Galvatron. Packaging for Galvatron is standard uh, box design just like all the other Kingdom figures as we can see. Got some beautiful box art right here on the front. Galvatron in tank mode going pew pew pew, bang bang bang. Picture of Galvatron here on the side. I'm sorry for that atrocious glare going pew pew pew, bang bang bang, looking really cool. Decepticon symbol up top. We got Kingdom stuff, leader class there on the side. Uh, just random stuff there on the bottom. Uh, Kingdom box art. We've seen it a thousand times. Then we come around here to the back, and we have a picture of Galvatron in his robot mode, his tank mode that he converts in 33 steps, and he comes with a matrix of leadership. So, yippee boxes. So, accessories, what does he come with? He comes with his fusion cannon, but that is equipped in tank mode, and I'll cover that a little bit later. He does come with, as advertised, the matrix of leadership, and it is on this chain. Uh, as we can see here, it's molded in plastic, uh, so no posability there, but you can remove it um, from the chain itself, uh, and it's just the same as the Earthrise Leader Class Optimus Prime mold uh, for the Matrix of Leadership, but it is painted quite nicely with some nice light blue. I like that color. Um, yeah, just a little Matrix of Leadership on a chain. Very cool accessory. And he does come with two additional guns. Sure. Yeah, why not? Uh, this is just a little miniature, uh, the revenge ship that Galvatron flew in the Transformers, the movie. Uh, very nice sculpted in detail. You can combine these two. Uh, there is a peg hole and a peg, and a reversed peg and peg hole on the other blaster, and they just tab into each other to make a giant weapon of sorts. A, it, it's, it's an option. It's something you can do. Uh, collector's card... And Dinobot, um, just go look at that, Dominus, cool collector's card, actually really like that uh, artwork of Dominus, I think that's one of my favorites, and then instruction booklet for Galvatron, and then safety sheet, so getting all that out of the way, let's bring Galvatron back into view, and behold, Galvatron, and Galvatron in his tank mode looks pretty solid i mean it's a pretty good tank mode not gonna lie perfect nah but i mean it is a good representation of galvatron in his tank mode all the details and whatnot are very nice very well done you know got the big orange barrel there at the front some missile pods there on the side some nice silver paint for the wheels of the tank overall very nice some more paint applications here at the back very, very nice. He does have some wheels on the treads and on these struts back here, so he can roll if you get everything lined up, so he can go near, 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 pew, 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 pew. Um, yeah, overall, tank mode ain't too terribly bad. Uh, my main criticisms with the tank mode have to be, uh, I wish there was another way to angle this strut. You can angle it, but it, it's kind of broken looking after a little bit. I wish there was a way you can kind of angle the tanks. Um... But that ain't too bad. There is a hollow gap that's left behind by this whole assembly here, which definitely uh, is kind of bothersome. But I mean, it is whatever. Uh, one of my, I think my biggest nitpick about that, why I say biggest nitpick, my biggest issue with the tank mode is how the chest of the robot mode just sits on the underside of this whole assembly here. And you can see it from the top there. Uh, I wish there was a way that you could probably slide this back. And uh, kind of help fill out some of this in here or something like that. But, you know, overall, the tank mode is not too terribly bad. Um, definitely a good little representation of Galvatron. Pretty cool looking. Yeah, good little tank mode. Uh, you can store all the accessories in tank mode. And if I just bring everything back in, we have all this fun stuff uh, for the revenge ship things. Um, there's a peg here and a peg here. You're going to peg the 
bottom, you're going to peg it in. There's two peg holes right here and here. Peg it in to the bottom side, just like so. Camera focus, thank you. Stay with me. And plug it in like so. And you get that going on. Then take the matrix of leadership and just slide it over the barrel. And then there is a tab right here and a peg right there that will tab in to that assembly right there. And truth be told, I actually really like the way this looks. It looks like a really geared out tank. Looks really good. I, I really do appreciate the, the look that it's got going on here. But that's everything for tank mode. Overall, pretty good. A uh, few flaws that I wish they could have worked around or maybe found a way to fix. But definitely in a uh, definitely a really good figure. Now, looking at a few size comparisons and comparisons in general, let's bring in Voyager Class Kingdom Cyclonus. And uh, if you've seen the 86 movie, there's definitely some mass shifting going on to have Galvatron be able to drive Cyclonus. But, you know, there they are. Titanium Diecast Series Rodimus Prime, Earthrise Voyager Class Starscream, and the old Titans Return of Voyager class Galvatron. And yeah, there's a little bit of an evolution here. This is the last mainline Galvatron figure, uh, G1 styled Galvatron figure we got. And uh, yeah, there's a bit of change going on here with the tank mode. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference. But there you have size comparisons. Now let's move into the transformation now that we got everything else about the mobile pew pew bang bang mode out of the way. Let's get down to his robot mode. So for the transformation, we're going to want to start off by removing any spare accessories, then coming to the tank barrel here and removing it, and then taking this back section here and remo removing it. There is a port and a peg just for this, and then we can take these two segments here, and this will become his fusion cannon for robot mode, so just get all that put together, and we have his fusion cannon right here. So, setting that off to the side. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, we can move into the actual transformation for Galvatron himself. Starting off here at the back, we're gonna go ahead and take these struts, fold them up, take these sections here that will become his feet, fold them in, just like so. We can now come around here to the front of the tank, Take these sections, untab them, untab them, and then untab the shoulder some the this pad here, and then hinge it up and get it out of the way. Do that on both sides. That come around here to the back, untab it from this purple section here. Take the legs, separate them, just like so. Then come around to this section here, pull it up. Take this assembly here and begin to pull it up, kind of double hinge it up like that. There is a tab right here that will peg into a tab hole right there. We can go ahead and take this section here, open it up, and then fold out the robot mode head and kind of just get all of this out the way to where you can line this up, tab that into place, finish rotating the chest down, and push that all into place just like so. Take this spike here, pull it up like that, and then there is a peg here that will peg in where the tank barrel was, and that will lock in just like so. We can now bring the robot mode legs down, and then we'll work on these next. Rotate these forward, make sure that stays tabbed in. Take this panel here, pull it back, and there is a tab right here that this will lock into. So do that on both sides just like so. Make sure all that stays nice and together. Let's go ahead. I'm going to bring my camera up some. Whoop. There we go. Come to the bottom of the foot and pull out his heel spurs just like that. Take these little sections here, fold them forward, and then take the shoulder assemblies and push them up and tab them into place just like that. We can take the shoulder pylons and... Bring them up and into place. Take the tank treads here, bring them back to the back side of the arm. Take the arms themselves, the forearms, untab them from the rest of the shoulder and double hinge them out like so. Bring the arm, the fists out, 
do that on both sides, just like so. Let's have the arms, fold out the fists, and kind of straighten them out and get them all evil looking, just like so. And of course, Galvatron would not be Galvatron without his almighty fusion cannon. Uh, there are two ports, depending on however you want to pose the figure, but I like to keep it up on this port here on his bicep. Just like so. And here we have Kingdom Galvatron in his robot mode. And Galvatron in his robot mode looks really, really good. I must admit, I was really honestly disappointed with the figure when I first got it, but that's due to QC issues in the legs. But then once I realized they weren't all that bad, I got to looking at the figure itself, and this is really, really good. I love the aesthetic of the robot mode. Definitely has this evil leader, this just this overall menacing vibe and aesthetic to it, which overall as a whole looks really really good the robot mode is not without its falls though i'll get into that in a little bit but just the overall aesthetic is really really nice and the build quality to the figure as well is awesome like this is a substantial figure the plastic is very um robust and it's very very uh well built and it's a very sturdy figure so let's get into the details Taking a look at the details, starting off here at the shins, the shins have been very nicely molded, detailed, and painted. We can see there's some weathering going on there at the shins, some black paint there at the feet. Uh, some people don't really like the weathering, it doesn't bother me. Um, got some nice black there on the, shin with some, on the shins with some nice red, some more purple there at the knees. The thighs have been molded really, really nicely. You can see, got the lower torso there. And the fusion cannon, which has been really nicely molded. And you even got some orange paint there on the side, which looks really nice. Uh, you do have this purple weathering effect um, on the forearms and on the chest itself. It doesn't bother me. I've seen a lot of people take it off. Uh, I think it looks really cool. I think it adds a little bit to that menacing look to the figure. It looks like he's been through his fair share of battles and then taking a look at the head sculpt for Galvatron that is a amazing head sculpt there you can see the silver paint against the red eyes the purple helmet and everything looks really 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 nice I like the the head sculpt quite a bit the purple Decepticon symbol and the figure cleans up relatively nicely as well I mean you got the tank treads ha hanging off the back I mean that's part of Galvatron's design. And I mean, the backpack is there, but it is also kind of part of Galvatron's design. He has kind of this uh, spike hanging off of his back. So, I mean, overall, the robot mode cleans up fairly nicely. I think overall, they did a really good job um, getting the robot mode to tidy up. I definitely feel like they prioritized this over the tank mode, which is what they should have done. So... Yeah, overall robot mode is really, really good looking. Now in terms of weapon slash accessory applications, obviously he has the matrix of leadership, which literally just sits around his neck, just like so. He does obviously have his cannon, which is on a five millimeter post. So any ports or anywhere uh, that you see fit for uh, the cannon to be, uh, you can plug it into the spot and uh, you know, it will just hang right in there. Uh, his little revenge ship blaster gun things uh, you can have stored in his hand or if you want weapon storage for the robot mode, there are pegs that you can peg these into just like so. See the little pegs right here. Uh, pretty much like that. So there you go. So, there is weapon storage uh, for all the accessories, you know. Uh, but the Matrix of Leadership is definitely a really nice touch. Um, definitely a good display option to have Galvatron holding the Matrix around his neck. Very, very nice display option, if you so choose. So, he has all the right looks for Galvatron, but does he have the posing? This is a War for Cybertron trilogy figure. I'll let you figure that out. Starting off here at the head, the head is on a ball joint. He can kind of look up, can kind of look down, has some nice tilt so you can get some kind of uh, more menacing poses. Uh, head, full 360, 
uh, obviously. Uh, it's a ball joint. Shoulder pads, you have some articulation there on a hinge, so you can kind of move these and orient these however you so choose. Um, arms are on hinges. They can swivel full 360. Uh, you do have a great, well, whoops, great degree of uh, outward movement as well, provided the cannon doesn't choose, doesn't doesn't get in the way. I don't know why I chose the arm with the cannon on it. Uh, you do have a bicep swivel, um, full 360, provided you get everything out the way. Just go ahead and take that off. Um, yeah, full 360 bicep swivel, double jointed elbows for well over 90 degree uh, elbow bend, and then you do get a fist swivel full. 360 degrees and then as you can see these uh, have the tank treads have a good little bit of posability in them as well so you can kind of orient those however you want um, for the torso assembly you do have a limited waist rotation due to the backpack uh, assembly kind of getting in the way uh, these hip panels here open up for a greater range of movement for the outwards hinge at the legs and then this is kind of weird but you got this little flap here for no apparent reason and even with it closed you get a perfect there you go focus a perfect amount of uh, uh forward kick out of that that doesn't really make any sense but you do get a little bit of backwards movement as well it is blocked up by this backpack section uh thigh swivel full 360 knee bend a little under 90 degrees and then you do get some ankle articulation uh not a whole lot before this whole assembly tries to unhinge and untab itself so i mean overall he's got a lot of good posability posability a little bit under uh under par in certain areas um but overall he has everything you really need to pull off some good galvatron um evil looking poses Galvatron is classified as a leader class figure, but definitely doesn't meet the height requirements of something such as uh, Studio Series 86 leader class Grimlock, who's a much bigger figure, but he does still scale taller than a lot of your uh, other figures within your collection. So, for size comparisons, Voyager class Cyclonus, and you can see that he's a little bit taller at the face. Um, Cyclonus' little ear things do extend to be a little bit taller depending on how you have him posed and oriented, but there's Cyclonus. Voyager class Earthrise Starscream. Titanium Diecast Series Rodimus Prime. And for old to new comparison's sake, here we have the Titans Return uh, Voyager class Galvatron again, and we can see there's been some major changes overall. Same character, but a lot of different traits. And this figure's been customized. I customized this figure. This thing definitely underwent some uh, changes just to get it to look a little bit better. But as we can see, the uh, the lead, new leader class Galvatron definitely does crush the old Galvatron in the looks department overall. Um, just a really, really good looking figure. But yeah. Leader Class and Galvatron size comparisons. And there we have Leader Class Kingdom Galvatron. Overall, a fantastic figure. The tank mode for Galvatron definitely is not bad. However, it is not perfect. It has some kibble in certain areas and hollow spots in the others. And then the transformation to robot mode is really, really fun and quite enjoyable. And then the robot mode itself is really, really good looking. I overall love the aesthetic of the robot mode, and I think the paint and everything has been applied really, really nicely, and the articulation and whatnot is really, really good as well. So overall, this is a solid recommend for me if you're looking for a good Galvatron figure. But guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to leave a like, comment what you think of Galvatron down in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me, Champion Productions, signing off.